Any seats taken? Yes. Well, where did the people go? To the bathroom. All three of them together? Yes. Well, I guess I'll just wait here for them to come back. Don't you touch that. Look, there are no other seats. I just need a place to sit. Don't you dare. Look, I just want to... You got a ticket. Go ahead, sit. I told you before, lady, those cases go up on the rack. I don't need to tell you this again, do I? Here, let me help. Get away! You sit there and stay there. Don't try to get fresh. I wasn't trying to get fresh. I just wanted right to play... men like you. You big city masher. call me Peggy. Would you like a bite? She headed for New York? Me too. I have a friend there who's promised me a job, so... I'm gonna work in New York, too. A Broadway show. Really? Wow, which one? I haven't decided yet. Uh, you don't believe me? No, 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 sure I do. It's just that... I've heard it can be kind of difficult getting started in theater. I know it, but I just feel I'm going to make it. You're a dancer? Certainly not. I don't intend to display myself. I sing. I'm pretty good at it. You're pretty good at eating apples, too. I'm sorry about your apple. Oh, really, really, I... I wasn't very hungry. I wish there was something I could do. You could sing for me. Sing for you? What, now? Yeah. I'd really like that, please. For it was Mary, Mary, plain as any name can be. And there was something there that sounds so square, it's a grand old name. That was great! Sure is awful big. It's a great city. I'd love to. Why don't I do that? What? Show you the city, the two of us together. When do we start? The first thing tomorrow. Where are you staying? Um, at the Victoria Hotel, but only for tonight. First thing tomorrow, I'm gonna find myself a nice clean boarding house. Great, I can help you look. I'll pick you up at 10. That way we'll have the whole day together. Sounds wonderful. Hey, Matt, you want this cab? 
Or are you just eating lunch? Yes, we want this cow. 10 o'clock, don't forget. I'll be waiting. Door, amigo. Party's in here. Painters, composers, anarchists, socialists, the usual village crowd. Do you know any of them? Me? No, no. I just snuck in for some free food. Mm. Whose party is this anyway? Mine. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Don't be silly. Come one, come all. Actually, I'm supposed to be staying down the hall with the Jacksons, but they don't seem to be home. Oh, so. they're not. They're in Europe. In Europe? Hmm? Is that a problem? Well, yeah, I'm supposed to be staying with them. I'll be alive. Take no thought of them, Laurel. Kate Rivers, what do you do? Indiana Jones. I'm an archaeology student. Pleasure. Archaeology. How fascinating. So tell me, is it true in ancient Egypt poets were worshipped as gods? Not exactly. But in the British Museum, there's a papyrus that says, For the scribe, there are no taxes. He payeth tribute in his writings. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell it to the internal revenue. <laughs> Wasn't there a religion based on fertility rituals? Well, most religions are. In ancient Greece, there's the myth about Dionysus. Dear Mom, I must tell you about the most wonderful, handsome boy I met on the train. Don't you see that there's a rhythm to our lives and poetry has to reflect it? So the poet is the mouthpiece of his age. Exactly. Who's your favorite poet? Shakespeare. Perfect. See, in his plays, in his sonnets, you can you can feel the pulse of Elizabethan life. They pound with it. But this is 1920. Exactly. So our poetry has to echo the rhythm of the 20th century, which is... The automobile age. Throbbing. Driving. I've never thought about it that way, but you're right. That sounds good. Breakfast. Uh, I think that's when we were talking about. Noon. Did you say noon? Yeah. Oh I've got to go. I've got an appointment. I'm sorry. She's gone. Are you certain? I'm positive. Miss Peabody checked out this morning. She was here till noon. Said she was waiting for someone. Then she left. She leave a message, a note, anything? She did not. The poor girl was in tears. I have no idea where she went. None.
It's me, Andy. Hi. Sorry if I woke you. I... What time is it? It's probably around three o'clock. But the truth of it is, I... I just left my bag here. And I was wondering if maybe I Dig could... around. Yeah, okay. Are you sure it's no trouble? Thanks. You're Andy. You're Kate. What's left of her? <laughs> oh, God, would you look at this place? Mm. Oh, maybe I could help you clean it up. Yeah. Oh, Miss Peabody, a young man was here earlier looking for you. Did he leave a message? No. Alone, friendless, and with no place to stay. Sounds like a line from a song. I mean, luckily, it's not true. At least the part about being friendless. Mm -hmm. There's a guy I know from Chicago that plays clarinet in a restaurant up in Harlem, and he promised to get me a job, so... What kind of job? As a waiter. Well, there are worse things. Like reviewing other people's books and other people's plays. <laughs> Why, I thought you were a poet. Well, I am, but I review for the Sentinel. Mm -hmm. Pays the bills. I'm glad you have a friend, though. This city can be awfully lonely if you don't. Well, don't tell me you're lonely. You mean the crowd last night? Well, they're sort of friends, I guess. But there's no one close. Do you have anybody like that? No. no. I thought I did, but no, there's no one. Well, I really better get going. Thanks a lot, really, for everything. Don't be silly, thank you. This place hasn't looked so good in years. Yeah. You're not going to haul that all the way up to Harlem, are you? Yeah, I guess. It's an awfully long trip. Listen, why don't you leave it here? Here? Sure. If I'm out, let yourself in. Okay? Okay. All right. Thanks. Sure. Sex man. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. How you doing? When'd you get in? Yesterday. Uh -huh. So how's it going? Eh, so so, only so so. This place isn't exactly what I imagined it to be. You know that waiter's job I promised you, Jonesy. Uh, I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, they promised me, I promised you, and promises are about all we got. Ah, oh, don't worry about it. New York's a pretty big town. I'm sure I'll find something. Hold on. One promise I did keep. I got your baby fixed. My buddy tuned her, so now she should sing like a morning lark. Oh, Sidney. You haven't forgotten how to blow it, have you? A soprano sax in a jazz band? Well, I never heard of that before. <laughs> well, let's hit it then. Uh, George. You want to sit in? Well, I thought you were never going to ask. Yeah, come on here. <laughs>
Yeah, sure enough. George Gershwin. Indiana Jones. Mm. That is some fine tune. Oh, thanks. Uh, are you a musician? Me? No, 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 no. I study archaeology and I wait tables. Uh... Interesting sax you play. Have a cigar. No, no, thanks. I don't smoke. Well, do you eat? Yeah, I eat. As a matter of fact, I'm starving. Come on, Mr. Saxman, let's eat. Let's go again, fellas. So what happened to her, this girl you met on the train? I lost her. I was dumb, and now I lost probably the nicest girl in the world. I don't suppose I'll ever see her again. Chin up, sport. There's a million girls out there. I know, I know, but I don't know. Peggy was different. So you fell in love? No, it wasn't love. Not yet. I only knew her for a few hours, but I don't know it was special. I don't know how to describe it. I wish I could find the words. Oh, you find the words, Andy, and I'll find the tune. Come on, George, this is special. You can't put this in a song. Can't put it in a song? Are you kidding? A song's the only place you can put it. Ask any of these guys. What, they're songwriters? This is Tin Pan Alley. All right, come on. Fellas? Fellas, my friend here needs some advice. George. He's got that feeling. That feeling of love. <laughs> I don't know. There's just, there's just something about it. Oh, there's something about love that's magic. It's tragic. It gladdens and saddens, too. It's something we're falling for. Our hearts keep calling for There's something about love We love <laughs> No, 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 you see, that's not it You see, the thing about Peggy is that she's so... Don't you mean the way she smiles? Then that's it, my boy, that's the answer Because, you see When my baby When my baby smiles at me My heart goes roam and roam and up Oh, when my baby, when my baby smiles at me, there's a wonderful light that shines in those eyes. <laughs> I sigh, I cry, it's just a bit of heaven when my baby, when my baby smiles at me. Take it, Chad. Well, if it's all so great, why do I feel so miserable? It's because she's nailed you, you poor sap. And now you're a goner. I'll call you back. There's something else, something bigger. I mean, why am I still thinking about her? Tell him, Mr. Berlin. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's very simple, boy chick. You keep thinking about her because... you up. Thanks, George. <laughs> Forget it. Well, what else are friends for? The only thing is, I don't know a whole lot about show business. It's easy. Any monkey can learn it. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Yeah, but no, I... you didn't. I, I was just thinking about you. I'll miss you. I'll miss you, too. You don't have to go. No.
You ever worked in a theater before? Yeah, once in Barcelona. Barcelona? Spain, with Diaghilev's Russian Ballet. Diaghilev, you putting me on? No, 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 I, I, was, I was a eunuch. Get that thing out of here! What you brought? Get on stage. And let's have some quiet around here! I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear what you just said. As far as I'm concerned, you're an idiot. Why are you? An idiot. Correct. Now open your idiot ears and follow me. Your job is to do all the idiot jobs that only an idiot wants to do, like make the coffee, run the air, and sweep the stage. Okay. Light her up, Harry! We got call sheets, look after props. Call the actors, see none of them's late. That's good! Most of all, you keep me sweet. Yes, sir. Why do you do this? Because I'm an idiot. That's right! Just remember, Jones, my name is God. And there's only one other God above me in this whole damn theater. Who's that? He sings, he dances, he produces, he directs. And his name is Mr. White! Schwartz! You're fired. Yes, Mr. White, thank you. Now, about these bills... Later, I have a show to put up. Bert! Bert, we're going to start with the opening, Scandal Walk. This is a great number, George. It'll kill Ziegfeld. Yeah, you think so? I guarantee <laughs> it. With your music, my dancing, and Ann Pennington starring, we're going to put the Follies right out of business. Mr. White, about Miss Pennington. What about her? I hear Mr. Ziegfeld has made her another offer, to rejoin the Follies. Well, let him. She's under contract to me. Yes, but I was See thinking... See what I mean? Uh -uh. Ziegfeld's running scared already, and we haven't even opened yet. <laughs> yeah, Mr. We're going to be the biggest hit on Broadway. What about these bills? Ziegfeld's going to have to Mr. retire. White. All right, ladies, let's see what you can do. You got the job then. Oh, yeah, George, I really appreciate it. Well, great, because tonight we're stepping out on the town. We are. We're going to a big party on Park Avenue. Park Avenue, really? We'll have a gorgeous time. Don't say you don't want to. Only trouble is I don't have any clothes. Now you have clothes. Okay. Well, I still have to talk to my girl. A girl? You mean you found her? That's great. Well, no, actually, this is another one. Another girl? <laughs> Boy, you sure don't waste time. Well, bring her along. She'll love it. My God, it sounds awful. Why? Have you ever been to one of those Park Avenue parties? Do you have any idea what those people are like? No, but I... They're the most ridiculous people in the world. I just thought it could be fun. Fun? When we could go to a poetry reading? Was that where you are going? Mm -hmm. Julian Darcy's reading his latest poems. I wouldn't miss it for anything. Well, that's it, then. What do you mean? Well, you can't go alone, can you? I mean, not now that... Darling, are you serious? You are serious. Well, you're so sweet. It's so old-fashioned. Why? Well, because we're not tied to each other. We're adult, independent. We make our own free decisions. Isn't that so? Yeah, but... I, so I, I'll I... go to my poetry reading, and you'll go to your silly Park Avenue party, and afterward we'll tell each other all about it. Are you sure? Of course I am, silly. Go ahead. Get dressed, put mm. your silly clothes on, go to Silly Park Avenue, mm. and have a wonderfully silly time. <laughs> Do you feel it? What? The, the sounds of the city. The, there's a the kind of music in it. The kind of music nobody's written yet. The kind of music I want to write. A symphony for car horns? Sure, why not? We need American music, not some third-rate imitation of what Europe was doing a hundred years ago. Peggy! Sorry. I beg your pardon. Is she a friend of yours? No such luck. I need to stop thinking about what I lost and just concentrate on what I have. Oh, no, George, maybe I should have just stayed with you. Caviar and a lot of champagne. Maybe you're right. No, 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 George, she's such a great girl. I mean, she's intelligent and she's cute. I don't know, I love just talking with her. And she's so. I don't know, intelligent. Yeah, you just said that. Come on. I don't know, George. Mike, will you make up your mind? Maybe just for five minutes. Five minutes and then I go. All right, if we don't stay too long, I could still make it before no, the end of the You're going to miss one of the social events of the age. George, George don't be sore. Oh, who's sore? I'm not sore. I really appreciate the opportunity. It's just that I'm certain 
Yes, I am certain as to where I should be right now. As a matter of fact, you've never been to a Park Avenue party before. George, don't try and change my mind. Five minutes tops. Then I leave. Can I tell you? There's a million girls out there. See you again tonight. I'll miss you. I'll miss you too. <laughs> Sweet dreams. <laughs> Morning. Morning. How's the party? Hmm? The party, how was it? Oh, uh, kind of boring. Oh. How was the poetry reading? Kind of interesting. Nothing wrong? No, that's, that's, that's great. Is this yours? Mm-hmm. It's good. Thank you. Let's have lunch today. Lunch? Today? Yeah, the Algonquin, one o'clock? The Algonquin. One o'clock. Okay. No, no, stop! Pick it up. Make it faster. With me. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh! 
this here, Mr. White. Okay. Take a break and stick around. You might learn something from a real star. And, honey, ready to try your new number? Why not? Charming is the theme, the he for me, although I realize... Ugh. What's the problem, honey? I just don't feel it. You're taking it too fast, Miss Pennington. Quiet. <laughs> too fast? You want it slower? Yes, it's meant to be a slower Well, how number. can I shimmy to it if it's slower? Well, you're not meant to shimmy not to it. Not meant to shimmy to it? Are you out of your mind? This is Ann Pennington, the queen of shimmy. I know that. Quiet. Well, darling. No, it just won't do. I'm sorry, Mr. Gershwin. Well, don't you worry about it. We'll just have to find you a better number, won't we, George? Thank you so much. No, no. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Give that song to one of the girls. Now all you have to do is to write our star a new number. Mr. White, about Schwartz, these bills. You're fired. Can I have that in writing? It's a crying shame. That was a great song. Thanks. But no song straight until someone sings it. How was it with Gloria last night? Gloria? She's wonderful. What about your other girl? Kate? Yeah. She's wonderful, too. <laughs> so now you got two girls, huh? She's wonderful, too. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Cause all I can think about each lovely dame is she. Pardon me, Mr. Jones. I just hate to disturb you, but your lunch date's arrived. It's not even noon. And her damn limo's blocking half the damn street! She's simply wonderful. Too. <laughs> I'll bring it back. Hey! Oh, darling. What are you doing here? I just couldn't wait. Tonight seems so far away. Whoa, 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 but I'm supposed to be at work right now. Oh, no, sweetie. It's <sighs> time for lunch. Right. I'm supposed to be at lunch. Uh, lunch. Oh, isn't this perfectly divine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that I really don't have much time. Oh, poo. Now, where should we have lunch? Well, I thought... <gasps> A picnic! Oh, how gorgeous. How clever you are. <laughs> <laughs> Ow, my thing, <laughs> Al. Horton, drive us to Chez Maurice. Yes, madam, Sorry. right away. Here you are, madam. <laughs> um, just think, darling, we've the whole summer ahead of us. <laughs> Weekends on Long Island. Sailing at Newport. Doesn't that sound simply mm. gorgeous? Mm, but, Gloria, I have to work. Mm. And I have shopping to do. Mm. But we can be with each other all the rest of the time. Mm. Oh, Wendy. Since last night, all I've been able to think about is you. Have you been thinking about me, too, darling? Mm. <laughs> Isn't this perfect? <laughs> You have to get back to that horrid old theater. Yeah. Well, the truth of it is, I have to run an errand for Mr. White. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could drop me off. All right. Okay. 
remember tonight, darling. Mr. White, sometimes he, uh, actually, I was just running some errands. Mm. Well, I hope you worked up an appetite. You're about to meet the vicious circle. Thanks. Hello, everyone. I'd like to introduce a friend of mine. Alexander Wolcott, Franklin Adams, Dorothy Parker, Harold Ross, Edna Ferber, Beatrice Kaufman, Robert Benchley, George Kaufman, Indiana Jones. Hello. Kate, what news on Broadway? Not a lot. Then why do you look so indecently ravishing? Don't say you're in love. Alec, you're old enough to know better. Older. Who are these people? Other critics, mainly. Edna writes novels, Dottie reviews, and writes poetry. Mm. Be brave, my darling. I promise I'll cook you a wonderful dinner tonight. And we haven't got a penny. Tonight, no. Oh, Mr. Jones, tell me, have you forgiven your parents yet? What for? For naming you after the dullest state in the Union. Actually, I name myself after my dog. Kate tells me you're with George White's scandals, Mr. Jones. Only as assistant stage manager. I hope it's a better show than his last one. You didn't like it? Well, I saw it under bad circumstances. The curtain was up. And the last act was better than the first. Of course, it had to be. Nobody could keep down that average. It was a bad play saved only by a bad performance. In heaven's name, let's hurry or we'll miss the intermission. <laughs> you have to see a burlesque show, Ziegfeld, your man. Well, actually, it's not a burlesque show. It's fun. It has great music. And plenty of half-naked girls. Well, sure, but so does the Follies. I mean, what makes that show better? Good taste, Mr. Jones. Siegfried glorifies the American girl. White, merely undressed. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you've written your notices already. Before the show's even open. It has been known. I hope you won't think the worse of us. From his expression, he couldn't. <laughs> Enough of this trivia. My children, I have a treat for you. Oh. A treat, did I say? Nay, a wonder. A joy. This is not a novel to be tossed aside lightly. It should be thrown with great force. <laughs> ah, Dottie, do not jest. Observe, rather. And marvel. <clears throat> Handle it reverently and with love. For what could possibly be more rare than a Woolcott first edition? Woolcott second edition? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the round table, Indiana Jones. <laughs> Next. 40, 21, 33, 30 seconds. That girl, Peggy Peabody. Oh, 
she wasn't too good. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I've heard her. I mean, she can really sing. Well, we need a dancer. Yeah, I know, but she's really great, George. I mean, she's got real talent. I know, I, she'd be terrific in the show. Mr. White, let go. Peggy Peabody. <laughs> they loved you. They did? You start tomorrow, is that OK? Oh, Andy. <laughs> What time do you get off? Well, six o'clock. I'll meet you at the stage door. I know the most wonderful little diner will celebrate. Peggy, I... I'm so happy. I don't think I've ever been so happy in my whole life. <laughs> Andy? Andy? Telephone. Hello? Joe, Joe. Oh, Kate. Hi. Oh, yeah, it's crazy here, too. You now are at the corner of 47th Street and Broadway. No, 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 Peggy, Peggy. Don't argue. I owe you, and I'm buying dinner. Six o'clock, Oh, okay, show. that sounds wonderful, darling. Okay. Sarah Jones here. Uh, over here. Delivery from Miss Shiler. Okay, your apartment. Okay, 8 o'clock. Okay, I'll be there. Uh-huh. Okay, I, I, I kiss you, too. Okay, bye. So now you have three girls? I'm having dinner with them tonight. All of them? At the same time? No, Peggy's at six, Kate's at eight, and Gloria's at 10. George, what happened? What did I get myself into? <laughs> Every man's dream, pal. That's what you got yourself into. Six o'clock, eight o'clock, 10 o'clock, two. Sounds like perfection George. to me. Peggy and Kate. And Gloria, guess you're in love with all three. The diner, the village, and Park Avenue. How will you know where you'll be? At six o'clock, eight o'clock, ten o'clock, two. Sounds like perfection to me. <laughs> Peggy Thanks, George. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, stay out of trouble. <laughs> Hey, Jones! Where do you think you're going, Jones? Well, I was just going to go get a bite to eat. Forget it. I need you to inventory the new costumes. Then I need seven copies of the lighting cube. But, sir, it's already six o'clock. I was supposed to meet someone. I'm already late. Move it! Before I light a real fire under your tail. I've got a bad feeling. Move it! You say he's done this before? It was an accident before. He probably just had to work. That's what they all say. It's not like that. Peggy! Peggy, I'm sorry I had to work late. I understand. My Mac, he's a slave driver. Are you hungry? Sure, I skipped lunch. Oh, I could eat two chili dogs right now. I'm treating you. So have three. Okay. Peggy, I really need to get back to the theater. Oh my gosh, 25 minutes ago. Indy, but you must eat something. Here. Oh. Hurry. Okay. You can eat the last one on the way back. You're late. I'm sorry, I had to work late. Telephones are unfamiliar to you? The phones were out. I'm sorry. I... Well, dinner didn't wait. <laughs> I'm sorry, is it ruined? <laughs> well, not if you like your beef very well done. I do, I do. Oh, this, this, this is really good. I feel bad. I shouldn't be upset with you because you work late. That's natural. So you know what I did? I made you some pasta. Oh, no, 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 really. No need, no need. As a matter of fact, I'm almost finished. This is so much better. This Wonderful is... pasta. Like oh, OK. It's divine, isn't it? Mm. You can eat up. Mmm. Actually, the truth of it is, I was supposed to be back at the theater 30 minutes ago. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, I know it's rotten. Rotten, yes. It's rotten, but, but it's, that's that show business, really. <laughs> I, I'm sorry.
you're hungry. Oh, sure, sure. I, I had Maurice prepare my very special extra favorite dinner. I just know you're gonna love it. Oh, poor Poopsie, you look so tired. You look like you need some help. don't look very well. You shouldn't work so hard. Did you have lunch today? <laughs> no, see? You really have to take much better care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Three meals a day is very important. I think what I really need is just to go home and get some sleep. No! You can't leave me so soon, you party pooper. At least stay and have some dessert. <laughs> Miss Shiler. is going on here? These girls are terrible. It's not their fault, Mr. White. Half of them are new. No, what the hell happened to the old ones? Siegfeld hired them away. He is determined to ruin the show. The hell with Flo Siegfeld. I'll ruin him. But we're supposed to open in 10 days. I mean, maybe we should cancel. Schwartz, we're going to open this show. If it kills us, we're going to knock Flo Ziegfeld on his ass. Phone call for Mr. Schwartz. Oh, no. Ladies, we're going to go again in 15. Uh, Ginger, let's try that number now, all right? That's you. That's you. Go, 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 go. It's still too fast. When the mellow moon begins to beam, every night I dream a little dream. Damn, what do you think of this kid? Not much. Me too, she stinks. Okay, hold it. Um, kid, it just doesn't work. I know I can do it if only they'd give me a chance. I know. It's not her fault. That song's a turkey. It's not a turkey. It's the best song I ever wrote. White? We've got a real problem here. And I know how to solve it. Let Peggy sing your number. She doesn't have the experience. But she does have the talent. She could do it. I know she could. You could teach her. <laughs> it's not possible. Everything's possible. Come on, George. At least let her try. What do you say? Is some kind of a joke? I wish it were, but all of our backers have pulled out. Ziegfeld got to them. They can't pull out. We've got a... We've got a contract. Unfortunately, it isn't signed. I did try to warn you, Mr. White. I suggest you try to find some new backers. Oh, where in God's name am I going to do well, that? Well, I don't know, but unless you do, and quickly. This show hasn't got a dog's chance of opening. You may as well fold it right now. How much do we need? Ta-da. Aye. $20,000? Might as well be 20 million. Poor Mr. Kirshen. Poor you. Just when you had a chance to try out for a song. I'll get over it. Isn't there any hope of Mr. White raising the money? Not a chance. He's flat broke. And hawk up to his ears. So what happens to the show? We're we'll going working for the rest of the week, but unless there's some kind of miracle. And there'll be nothing to meet the payroll. And everyone's out of a job. How much does White need? 20,000. Might as well be 20 million. Hand me the phone, will you, darling? Go ahead, cancel our supper reservations. I don't even really feel like eating. Shh. Hello? Is this the best daddy in the whole world? Although I realize as well as you, it is seldom Bert. that a dream comes true. Bert! But it still needs to be slower. I I'm sorry, Peggy. You're doing fine. Take it again.
Everybody on stage. Folks, you've all heard about angels. Well, I want you to meet a real live one. Meet J.J. Shiler, our new backer. Kids, we got a show. <laughs> Anything special you'd like to see? Oh, just go on with what you've been doing. Okay, back to work. Come on. When the mellow moon begins to beam, every night I dream a little dream. And of course, Prince Charming is the theme. She's nervous, the and the tempo's not right. Right or not, she's lousy. You Say, this little girl is pretty good. You like her, Mr. Shiner? I think she is great. Don't you? I love her. I think she's terrific. <laughs> okay, honey, you got the number. <laughs> Shyla, how would you like a backstage tour? Whatever you say, Mr. White. Right this way, Mr. Shyla. Indy! Oh, Indy, you. I got it! You're great. <laughs> oh, Take yes, it easy. Let the I know. I know. Peggy, you were great. You really were. That was fabulous. It was the best performance I've ever seen. Well, hello there, son. Hi, sir. How are you? Do you two know each other? Sure do. He's been stepping out. Hey, you still work on that song. Hello, Hello darling. <laughs> so this is show business. Yes, sir. I guess it is. Steel symmetry of pistons, throbbing, pulsing, driving engines of our century, the age of the machine. Thank you. To finish my latest, the title is from Shakespeare. I call it Lover's Meeting. Rainstorm over the city, the sky black as a witch's hat, concrete canyons stream. Then look, I see you running toward me. My own, my true, my love, sunburst. Suddenly, the city's a garden glorious. Even the sidewalks shine. I wrote it for you. What can't get you? I'm sorry. Well, I've been sitting here for ages. I know, I know. I just couldn't get away. From that horrid old theater, I suppose. Yeah, we're rehearsing late. Well. You are going to have to tell that nasty old slave driver, Mr. White, that he has to let you up early. <laughs> or maybe I'll go tell him so myself. No, no, you can't do that. I mean, we open in only a week. So... Oh, poo. That silly show is more trouble than it's worth. I know, I know. I'll try not to be late again. <laughs> well, I am going to make sure that you're not. No, no Glory, that's too expensive. I... Oh, poo. <laughs> now you will have no more excuses. You naughty boy. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm a tea kettle brown. This is how I want you to sing my song. Well, I'll try. You can do it. <sighs> Sorry. Hey, I got held up. <laughs> Indy, you're soaking. Hold still. Keep it, I want you to. See those initials, SP? My grandmother gave it to me. And now it's yours. Peggy, no, it's too special. That's what I want you to have. Price of perfection. Maybe it's time to choose. I can't. I just can't. I mean, Peggy's so nice and caring. Kate's 
He's so intelligent and well read. Boy, he's so beautiful and so rich. Can't you at least give one of them up? But which one? Not Peggy. Not Kate. Not Gloria. Her old man's backing the show. See? It's impossible. Don't be downcast, poor little boy, when the world goes wrong. Something always comes to destroy things we have planned so long. Our visions of gladness we keep in view, but somehow they seldom. I hear you're in serious trouble, Mr. Jones. I am? Not you personally. Your show. Lo Ziegfeld says you're headed for disaster. Well, he has prejudice, wouldn't you say? He is also extremely powerful. <laughs> what does that mean? It means he's in a position to do something about it. Like pull his ads from all the newspapers. Pull his ads? If their critics give the scandals a good notice. Can he do that? Well, has been known. But that's not fair. All's fair in love and show business, Indiana. Haven't you ever noticed that Broadway is paved with blood? Are you saying he's blackmailing you to give us bad reviews? That's right. Thank goodness I'm not covering it for the Sentinel. Well, are you gonna let Zigfield get away with it? <laughs> Sorry. Are we gonna let Zigfield get away with it? What? And compromise the fair purity of the press? <laughs> well, are you? Never. So no matter what Zigfeld does, you'll give the scandals a fair shake. If it's any good. So cheer up, Indiana. And good luck. Good luck. Sounds like you're going to need it. <laughs> Charles! Yes, sir? Do it! If you see something that needs to be done, do it! Come on. Ladies. Move it! Yes, sir. Charles! <laughs> Have you seen Bonzo? Bonzo? You know, my monkey. No, and I told you not to let him back here, ever. Bonzo! Get to Peabody Broad. Now! Peggy! Where have you been? You're late. How did I deliver the lunch? Late one more time and you're fired. I ain't said going out. Center stage. Well, thanks so much for gracing us with your presence, Miss Peabody. I'm so sorry, Mr. White. Charming is the theme for he. She can dance me. a bit too. Although I realize as well as you, it is seldom that a dream comes true. To me, to me, it's clear. That oh, it's a pity she can't do both at the same time. That number is never going to work. The show is running long. You're right. Forget it, kid. The number's out. Mac, set up for the Act One finale. Thanks. Hey, listen, it's not your fault. It is. I thought I had time and I don't have a watch. And now Mac says I'll be fired if I'm late again. No, you won't. You won't be late again. Can you keep that okay? Okay. Okay. You just relax, and I'll cook you something to make you forget all about it. Want to get the phone? Okay. Hello. Hello, darling. It's 
It's me. How, how did you get this number? Well, it's in the files. I'm your boss, remember? Right, right. Uh, what's up? I need you. What? Well, Daddy's out of town, and I'm all alone, and I'm so afraid. Please come over and rescue me. No, 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 no. No, I'm too tired, I can't. Oh, but I'm so scared. Please. No, really, really, I'm just beat. I'm really just too tired. <laughs> but you must. You won't be sorry. Okay, 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 I'm on my way. Oh, goody. Bye, darling. Yeah, bye. It, it was a theater calling. They need me back there right away. I, oh. I couldn't get out of it. Oh, I wish there was something. Yeah, yeah, I know. Why, yes. What? No. I. Of course, it's... Of course what? Of course. Of, of course what you just said. You were asleep. No, 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 no. I wasn't. I was thinking about you. I feel... I feel like there's been a sunburst. Yes. And suddenly... Suddenly the city is a garden. Glory. Yes. Even the sidewalks shine. Oh, darling, that's so beautiful. It's so perfect. Is it from a poem? Yeah. Yeah, but it hasn't been published yet. Oh, do you mean that you wrote it for me? Ooh. Oh! Mm. Mm. <laughs> thank you, thank you, my sweet <laughs> darling. I will treasure it all my life. Even the sidewalks shine. <gasps> oh, Indy. Do you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to have it engraved on my cigarette case. It's going to be set in gold forever. Isn't that perfectly divine? Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Woo! Hey, Ginger, Sophie, come here. Look at this. Mr. Jones. Mr. White, the turntable. I don't care what it is. You fix it now. I'll try. And you, you're all terrible. This is supposed to be the Act One finale, and it's a disaster, and we open tomorrow night. They're tired. Tired? Baloney! I'll show them tired. Now, you listen to me. We're going to go back to the opening, and we're going to work until we drop. And then we're going to get up off the floor and work again and again and again. Okay. Places. Indy. <laughs> Watch it. Stop. Not so hard. Hurry up. Hurry up. Next. Come on. Ooh. <laughs> Smile. A bit more. Come on. Come on. Come on.
couple of hours. It will either be a hit or out of a job. <laughs> I guess it's in the lap of the gods. Yeah. Or the critics. You know what? I just remembered something. It's my birthday. I'm 21 today. <laughs> Shows up, sends him straight to the light room. If for any reason at all. What are you doing? You're not in costume. We go up and. I just had to thank you for the beautiful roses. Okay, okay. Peggy, listen. If we... I am so mad, but the editor insisted. Editor? A theater critic went sick, so I have to review the show. I argued he wouldn't listen, but don't you worry, darling. I won't let you down. I'll be objective. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Good luck, darling. Okay. No, no, no. Kate, Casey. Okay. Hello, darling. Gloria, hi. Bye. Yeah. Miss Charlie, really, you really shouldn't be back here. Oh, we gotta come back and wish you luck. Okay, Gloria, listen. That's right, son. I've got a feeling that this is gonna be a night to remember. <laughs> You're right, sir. It's gonna be a night to remember. You're right. Excuse me. Jones, get over here, quick. What happened? Ziegfeld, that's what happened. To Mac, with all my best wishes for tonight, have one on me. Whoa. Who's gonna run the show? You are. Me? No one else. No, no Mr. White, I can't because I don't... That's a piece of cake. You'll do fine. You better, because if you don't, I'll murder you. Let's knock him dead. First act finale. We'll go through the second act during intermission. Relax, it's a piece of cake. Now call beginners. Come on, let's go, let's go. Beginners on stage! Move it! Hurry it up! Opening number costume. They disappeared. Disappeared? How could they have disappeared? Somebody must have stolen them. Oh, oh we've got us our feathers, Indy. What are we gonna do? Take them off. <gasps> Take them off. Take all the feathers off. Here's your seat, Mr. Hemingway. <laughs> Harry Frank, stand by. Please bring up eight, twelve, and forty-six. Take the house down. At least they're starting on time.
Curtain down. Scrims out. Miss Pennington, stand by. Stuck in her dressing room? Finale, stand by. Harry, I think we're gonna make it. Indeed. The turntable's busted. What? No, 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 no. Get back out there. We'll freeze the number. What for? The turntable's busted. Get. Go, Indy. What are we gonna do? 
Where's Peggy? Peggy? Peggy, she's up there. Come on. What? Mr. Gershwin. Hurry, we're going to do your number. Do my 50 seconds. Just like we rehearsed it. George, the orchestra doesn't have the music. Uh, we don't need the orchestra. I'll play it myself. Mr. Gershwin. Don't worry, I... kid. You'll be fine. Now remember, just like we rehearsed it. Supposed to be a finale. Listen, fat, so if you don't shut up. Sorry. Thank you. Now we're all counting on you. And you're not gonna let us down. Now get out there and save the show. I can't do it, I can't. Yes, you can. There's some people I want you to meet. It was wonderful. Let's get something to drink. All right. Well, George, it looks like we've got ourselves a hit. Oh, uh, well, let's wait for the notices. Uh, no, no, well, son, now that the show's open, I guess we'll be seeing a lot more of you. Mm, we certainly will. Excuse me. 
Gloria, sir. Why is that boy always in such a damn rush? Daddy. Kate. Oh, I loved it. Daddy said it was the best thing on Broadway in great, the Great, great. Here they are. Are they good? Are they good? Let's, Kate. Okay. Don't you want to hear the notices? I'd rather you just tell me everything that you wrote. Sensational scandals. That's silly. After the silliness. George Gershwin's music, the best on Broadway. The idea was originally on me. It put the follies to shame. <laughs> I'm never around the flow with my regards. <laughs> and the stage management was faultless. You're not my personal triumph. Yes, Hats yeah. off to Peggy Peabody, Broadway's latest bright star. <laughs> there you go, oh, kid. Peggy. Uh, I must tell Indy. Oh, yeah. Okay, here. Papers for everybody. Here. Oh, the whole story. Don't tell me. You're Peggy. Peggy. Oh, I'm so happy. Darling, do you mind if I go and fix my face? No, no. Go, go ahead. Take all the time you need. <laughs> Where's Kate? T relax. She's going to the powder room. No! Why? What's up? Peggy went to the powder room. Oh, uh, well, what about Gloria? Gloria? She wouldn't... I'll never forget this moment. It's the happiest that... Peggy, Gloria, Kate, I can explain. I never meant for one minute to hurt anybody. There's never a time... That... I'll never do it again. I never... I know... Oh. You're despicable. You're out. You're fired. You're the lowest. You're trash. You're on your own. <laughs> 